Hey everybody, Forrest here from Rocky Mountain School of Photography, and today we're gonna take a look at how you can go about editing big 4K 60 frame per second video clips on a small, portable, Ultrabook laptop or even an older laptop that might not have the CPU and GPU horsepower to normally do this. Now, before we get into the how-to, I need to talk a little bit about why this happens because I, I had a hard time kind of finding a comprehensive video explaining all of this stuff when I was struggling with this over the weekend. So let me do my best to simplify down uh, kind of the key elements of why this is an important problem and, and how we can go about fixing it in a very smart way. Now, let's get into the problem first. The problem is, is that all of our video cameras that we commonly use, and I'm excluding pro cinema gear because they're in a whole nother camp, but for us amateurs, using DSLRs, mirrorless cameras, phones, drones, whatever it happens to be, all cameras shoot in a certain codec, and a codec is a coder decoder. It's basically a way that a file is written down to your memory card uh, that determines how basically that structure of the file is written. And the codec that most amateur and lower, not lower end, but more um, non-professional, semi-professional amateur equipment shoots is in the H.264 or H.265 codec. Now, before your brains explode, it's very simple. H.264 and H.265 are very, very good for writing files down to a memory card. And what I mean by that is they're a very small, compact codec. You can fit a lot of H.264 or H.265 video clips on a memory card. And therefore, that's why the camera companies choose to have your cameras shoot in that codec. The problem is, is that when you go to edit those files, because that codec is such a compressed small codec, in order to actually take that file and then edit it and scrub through it and have your computer render it, your computer has to do a lot of work to make that file viewable and editable for you in Premiere. A much more edit-friendly codec is something like Apple ProRes or Cineform or DNX HD. Those are three codecs that are great for editing, but they're very big. And what I mean by that is if you take an H.264 file, say it's 100 megabytes, and you convert it to say DNX HD, all of a sudden you've tripled or quadrupled the file size of that clip. There's no more information in it. It's the same exact video information contained in the file. It's just that your editor has less of a hard time working and interfacing with the DNX HD file versus the H.264 file. So the reason that this is all important is because of course camera companies are going to want to fit as much clippage, clippage is a new word I just, I just coined, as much clippage onto your memory card as possible. And because of that, they're gonna write their files down in H.264 or H.265. Okay, so now that we've looked at the problem, we need to talk a little bit about the solution. How do we fix this? Well, there's two ways that you can go about fixing having these large clips and needing to edit them on a slow computer. Well, actually three solutions. I would say solution number one is not having a slow computer. If you have like an ultra ball in computer that's like super powerful, you can probably render out and work with H.264 and H.265 files in Premiere without that much trouble. But you need like an extreme computer. And I think for most of us, that's not really practical. So there's two practical solutions. The first practical solution is to do what's called transcoding all of your footage from one codec into another codec. Now, switching between codecs does not really lose any quality. Quality. So there's not really a loss or a degradation here. You're simply rewriting the files into a more edit-friendly codec. An example of this would be taking your footage from H.264 and converting it into Apple ProRes. You can use something like Adobe Media Encoder to do this, but you gotta remember that when you do this translation, when you do this, uh, this conversion between codecs, you are missing out on the fact that the files that are going to be kicked out are gonna become ginormous. Um, Again, I used the example earlier in the video, but we're talking like a 4X increase in file size, which means if you import a 32 gigabyte card and you convert and transcode all of those files from H.264 into Apple ProRes, your 32 gigs of footage just turned into over 100 gigs of footage which those of you who've worked with video, you'll know that that's quickly going to go crazy. That's option one. Option two though, I think is a little bit more convenient at the loss of a couple downsides. And we'll talk about those in a second. But the second option is to use what are called proxies. 
proxies are smaller versions of your original files that Premiere uses when you're doing your editing, when you're making cuts, when you're color grading, when you're doing simple things like that, you're actually working on the proxy files. And then when you actually export the project out of Premiere, Premiere exports with the original files. So basically for all intents and purposes, inside of Premiere, you're working on the proxies and then Premiere takes any of the things you've done to those proxies and applies them to the full clips when you export the video. Now, the nice thing about proxies is, is that proxies are very small. And even if you create them in Apple ProRes or in a more edit friendly codec, you are still keeping the file size pretty small due to the fact that simply the resolution is actually lower. Most proxies have a resolution of around a thousand pixels wide instead of 4K footage being 4,000 pixels wide. So it's a more friendly codec and it's also a smaller file, which is super awesome. So those are the kind of two solutions. What I want to focus on in this video is the proxy side of things, because I think there's a lot of videos out there on how to transcode footage from one, uh, one codec to another codec. There's not that many on how to really effectively use proxies in a really simple way and be sure that you're working to the best of your abilities. All right, so I'm in Premiere now. I've got a new project created and I just want to show you guys how bad this is. So here I have a 4K drone clip. I'm just going to double click on it. And this drone clip is uh, just to quickly point out, it's stored on my internal hard drive. So you want to think about uh, kind of eliminating as many bottlenecks as possible. If you are having a hard time in Premiere, a lot of times people are storing their footage on their external hard drive, they're spinning external, and that's gonna introduce quite a bit of bottlenecking using Premiere. So it could be that your Premiere is running slow because you're storing things on an external versus the internal. In this case, this is best case scenario. So this is an M.2 SSD, it's a very fast SSD inside my computer, so that's not the bottleneck. And if we grab the little scrubber and we scrub through it, you guys can see it is basically non-responsive. I mean, it takes it a good long while to update to what I've scrubbed to. We can see I fully scrubbed over here and it's it's not able to keep up. It's not able to do it. So very much we have a problem. We need to fix it. So check out how easy this is. All we're going to do is right click on the clip or clips. And I usually do this with all of my clips as soon as I import them. So I have the proxies built from like step number one. But what we're going to do is we're going to go to proxy and we're going to go to create proxies. Now from here, unfortunately, the Premiere defaults are actually pretty horrible. It actually defaults for most people to building H.264 proxies. Well, let's think for a second. What's the worst part about the footage that our cameras and our, our drones shoot? That it's H.264. So if we're gonna make little proxy files, why would we want those to be H.264 as well? It doesn't make much sense to me. So instead, we're gonna choose QuickTime for the format. And then we have a choice between DNX, ProRes and Cineform. And you can play around with these different things and kind of decide. You also have a choice between low res, medium res, and high res. That's just how big the file is. Personally, when I'm editing on a laptop screen, I find it hard to see a difference between low, medium, and high. So I'm gonna go with low res. And for me personally, I like Apple ProRes. I find that it works really well in Premiere. Cineform works pretty well too, and so does DNxHR. There's really not that much of a difference, but for me, I'm gonna go ProRes. I also kind of like that ProRes low res is what I like to pick because it's fun to say. So I'm gonna do ProRes low res, and then we're gonna actually set the destination as next to original media in a proxy folder. That just means that wherever your original file lives, it's gonna add a proxy folder in that folder, and it's gonna store the proxies inside of that. We're gonna hit okay. It's going to basically create the proxy job and it's gonna send it off to Adobe Media Encoder, and we'll check back once it's created. All right, we can see Adobe Media Coder just finished. Obviously, if you have more than one clip, you'll see all of the clips kind of over here on the upper right hand corner and they'll each have their own progress bar. It'll go through and it'll say done next to each one. I'm gonna go ahead and close this and uh, we're gonna go ahead and get back into Premiere. Now there's one more thing in Premiere that we need to do in order to use these proxy files. And this is one of those things that I missed when I first started using proxies. And I was like, well, proxies are stupid. You have to, they're not working. Well, they are, you just have to add this little button here to your Premiere toolbar. So all you gotta do is go to the plus sign in either the source or the program panel. And you have to grab this little thing that looks like a, a large box with arrows pointing to a small box and drag it and throw it down onto the toolbar down here. And then once you hit okay, you can toggle it so it turns blue. When it's blue, it means you are working and looking at the proxy. And when it's not, it means you're looking at the other one. 
you basically always wanna leave it blue um, unless you're trying to look at what the file looks like at high resolution. So let me give you an example. Now that we are looking at the blue, check this out. I'm gonna scrub through this file and you can see it's so much smoother, right? Think before it was like, eh, 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 it couldn't do it. In fact, I can show you real quick. Let me turn off the proxy and let me drag through it. And you'll notice it's unresponsive, right? It's like, uh, uh, it can't keep up, there's no way. And that's because that H.264 codec is just so bad, the computer's having to work really, really hard to render out all those frames. We turn back on the proxies, and then all of a sudden, we're able to smoothly scroll. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a game changer. That's so, so, so awesome. Now. Why would you wanna turn this off? Well, you wouldn't. So for all of your editing in the timeline and doing cuts and transitions and all that, you can keep the blue proxy button turned on. There's no disadvantage to doing that. The only reason you might wanna ever turn it off is if you wanted to go into say full screen on the clip and you wanted to see what it actually looked like. like you can kinda of see right now, it's kinda of smudgy, it doesn't look 4K. And if we turn off the proxy and we scrub just a little bit, it should update to 4K. And you can see now it crisped in, it shows all that nice 4K detail. So fear not, your full clip is behind there. Um, and even if you export with the proxy button clicked, you're still gonna get a 4K export if that's what you ask for. So Premiere will always use the original files for anything involved with exporting and offloading the media. It's just when you're in the editor, when you're doing the day-to-day -day work, if that blue button is clicked, you're gonna be using both a smaller resolution file as well as a better codec file, which will result in much smoother editing. I do wanna remind you guys that the other option is to actually transcode all of your footage from H.264 into Apple ProRes or DNX. You can totally do that. Just keep in mind that all of that footage is going to take up more space on your hard drive by a factor of three or five or something like that. So you definitely can do that. And if you do do that, you don't need to use proxies at all. Your computer can probably handle editing those files in a familiar codec very, very simply and very, very easily. So I hope you guys learned something. I was struggling to find a video that really comprehensively explained all of this information. So I hope I've done a good job of that. If you guys like this video, I would appreciate you hitting that thumbs up button. If you didn't, you know what to do. If you guys have a question or you want to, uh, add something to the discussion, leave that down in the comment section. And lastly, hit subscribe up there or down there to stay up to date with future videos. We put out videos every single week on photography, video, uh, editing, all kinds of different topics. So definitely stay subscribed and get subscribed if you are not already. Thanks guys, and I'll catch you in the next one. This face detection autofocus is amazing. I can put my face over here, I can put my face over here, and it still stays sharp. I don't have to keep my face right here like I do with the C300s. <laughs> oh, I love Fuji life.